Hey, how's it going? This is John Tell. Today we're going to be taking a look at the OSD SS8 DSP, a slim subwoofer. Quick disclaimer, OSD is a channel sponsor and I've agreed to make a video for them each month highlighting one of their products, but I am allowed to say whatever I want about a sub. So you guys let me know if I'm being fair in this review. And if not, leave a comment, let me know. I think I'm gonna be even harder on OSD. <laughs> this is a slim, versatile ported subwoofer measuring approximately 21 by 16 by 5.5 inches. This uses an eight inch injection molded cone and the faux leather wrap that I liked on their Travoce series. Now they claim 200 watts of power. They don't say whether it's RMS or peak and that's always sketchy. I would like for them to just say, this is what it is, RMS. That would let me know what it is. This also has DSP capabilities that you can tune to your liking. So what can this thing do? So it adds bass if you have some small speakers and if you're in a predicament where you can't just throw any sub in any location. So this will actually fit under the couch, under your bed, in those situations where you just don't wanna see a sub at all. Now, if you wanted to wall mount it, that's actually another option here because it comes with an included bracket, kind of handy. This is also cool because it does offer DSP tuning in the form of an app called iWoofer, which allows you to DSP this digital signal processing to correct it to sound the best in your particular listening position. Now, right off the bat, who is this not for? This is not for somebody who wants really deep bass extension. This sub just doesn't provide crazy 20 Hertz and below frequencies, it's not gonna do that with a single eight inch driver, just can't. So if you want that deep bass extension at super high SPLs, uh, you have to look elsewhere. It's not for you if you already have some full range towers with some 10 or 12 or 15 inch drivers in them, well, this is probably not gonna do you any good because you have larger drivers in your main speakers anyway. And this is also not for you if you have a larger room and if you have the space and the budget for larger subs, just go with the larger subs. So who is this for? This is for somebody who prioritizes not seeing the subs at all. If you just don't wanna see the subs, you wanna hide them somewhere, well, this is the solution for you. If you don't mind some more traditional shapes, OSD does have their Travoce line, which does offer 12, 10, and eight inch woofers. And so that might be a solution also. This is also for somebody who doesn't want to spend a ton of money on a sub. This is very inexpensive. On Amazon right now, I see it for 199 with a 15% coupon code. So check it out there. So it's not expensive. And so you also can't expect a ton of performance at this price. This also might be for you if you're willing to set up maybe two or three of them and put them, you know, put three of them under your couch. Maybe you're gonna get more performance that way or maybe have two under the couch and one on the wall. You know, the more subs you add, even if it doesn't have crazy low base extension, that extra overhead and with the use of DSP will allow you to get deeper, lower extension and at higher SPLs just because you have more subs, more surface area, more air displacement. Now, considering the price, it might be feasible to get two or three of these instead of getting one more expensive subwoofer. Just up to you. This is also for you if you have some tiny satellite speakers, right? So maybe not even bookshelves, or maybe if you have some smaller bookshelves that really don't have very much bass, this will give you that extra bass that you need. Like I'm saying, not super low bass, but decent bass. This is for you if you have reasonable expectations of what you want from this. If you just want that extra bass, not crazy low bass, but just nice, full bass so you can at least feel some of the music, then this might be for you. Also, if you're just getting into this hobby and you don't wanna spend a ton of money and you wanna learn about DSP, you wanna learn about how placement affects the bass, things like that, and if you don't have space, again, this might be for you. So here are some of the things I think it does extremely well. It gets out of the way. The form factor is just perfect for putting it under the couch and just making the most efficient use of space. Like I said, it also has a wall bracket with some foam on here to make sure that it doesn't rattle when it's connected. Very handy and it's cool that it comes with it. The other thing is the amount of input options. So you have high level inputs as well as RCA inputs. So that's kind of cool. In case you have an amplifier that may not have a subwoofer out, you can actually connect the high level into this 
and there you go. So the DSP does allow you to tweak the settings for gain, for phase, and apply your own parametric EQ and target curves in the app. If you have the iOS app, which is five bucks, it actually allows you to do some of that using the microphone on the app itself. So if you have an iPad, something like that, it's kind of cool. You don't even have to have a calibrated mic, although of course it's better if you did it that way, but it's just an option. If you just want to play around and mess around and not have to invest too much, it might be something to check out. So that's handy if you want to extend the bass response because on some AVRs, it doesn't really extend the bass response out. It just flattens the response. So if it doesn't detect that the bass can be produced by the subwoofer, it'll just say, well, the, it can't produce it. So what you might want to try out is extend the bass using the DSP and then let your AVR say, okay, this is how we can best flatten it out and blend it with the rest of the speakers. The other thing I like is that you can turn the DSP off. So DSP inherently adds extra delay. So if you're using a two channel setup and you don't have an, a way to delay your main speakers to account for the extra delay that DSP adds, then you may want to just turn it off. Right, so that's an option and it's cool that it's there. The other thing I think it does extremely well is it gets surprisingly loud at some of the higher bass frequencies. So when you're starting to get into the 50, 60, 70, 80 Hertz region, it can play that pretty loud and uh, with no issue. So what can it do? Okay, it can add some bass, but again, not super low bass. The DSP on here with the iWoofer app does have a learning curve. So you still have to play around with that. It's not the most polished app, although they're currently updating it. Also, it's $5 if you wanna use the version on the iOS app with Pro that unlocks some other options. And because of the versatility, I think it's kind of just fun to play with. It's just an inexpensive subwoofer to mess around with and learn. Now, what are some of the downsides? Like I said, multiple times, it can't play those super low frequencies at high SPLs, just will not play them. Even if you tune the DSP to kind of extend it out further, you're gonna see that you're gonna start reaching the limits of the amplifier and the driver itself when you start trying to push it. You're gonna hear some noises that you don't really wanna hear. And that's the other thing, you will start noticing some resonance in certain levels when you start pushing the driver. And so it doesn't seem that they have a limiter on here, but yeah, you can push it, you can overdrive this if you wanted to. Just make sure if you start hearing some crazy noises, turn it down. On my particular version, there was an air leak near the power plug and so I've told the owner and they said that they're gonna address that in future releases. But if you happen to have that issue, a little bit of blue tack or hot glue will solve the issue. Seal up those little places where air can leak and you're fine. It's not something that I would want to have to do, but for at this price, it's almost forgivable. What are some other alternatives in the hundred to $200 price range? There are a lot of popular subs on Amazon. I saw one from Polk and you know, uh, I think ELAC, you know, under 200 bucks. And I think that those are gonna be good, but they're also significantly larger. So you won't be able to throw those under your couch. You know, you can't hide them away. And that's kind of where this is, uh, that's where this specializes. If you really wanna hide the sub, you have to go with something like this. Another alternative is OSD's own Travoce line, which I really like. I like some of their offerings there and they have some good deals on them. Those do have more output. They have passive radiators on the side and that helps because you don't have any port chuffing that you would expect from most ported enclosures so those are good to check out and those also have dsp built in so here are some quick measurements that i did in room take a look take a listen all right so here we are looking at the osd ss8 dsp in rew and so this is an in-room response, so I have to make sure that I let you guys know about that. So this is not a ground plane measurement. Basically, this is just to give me an idea of where this is starting to drop off. So don't take this as an actual spec, but um, just to give you kind of an, an idea, okay? So taking a look at this, you can see the shape of this graph, and I know it's showing that it's peaking around 109 decibels. So I took this measurement about three feet away and I'll give you a little sound demo here to give you an idea about how that sounds like compared to my normal speaking voice. So this is three feet away. All right, so this is gonna be from 10 hertz to 500 hertz.
like we're saying, so 109 decibels is the max, but that's up here at, you know, 50 hertz plus, and that's what I was saying, like it play, plays pretty loud above 50 hertz, but what you really want is you wanna play below that, right? You wanna play some of these bass notes, and you can see that it starts falling off, and I know it looks counterintuitive, but the reference point, which is kind of the average in this region, is actually 101.2. All right, so 101.2, that's here, right? So if you kind of lob this off, this is about the average reference point that I was taking the measurement. So 101.2 and three decibels down from that, which is typically where they get their specs from when it says plus or minus three decibels. So right here, we're at 28.3 hertz is the minus three dB point. Uh, that's not too bad. I mean, you know, not super low bass like I was saying. You know, minus six dB if you really want to go there, right around here at 23.5 hertz. So this is like, you know, when some of the specs, they kind of cheat and they say, oh, this is how deep our, our sub goes. Well, you know, really what you want is the minus three dB point. So right around there, just to give you an idea of what's happening. So this is the max right at the point where it's about to start clipping, right? When you started hearing noises that you didn't want. And so, this is not a replacement for a CTA 2010 measurement, which my buddy Aaron at Aaron's Audio Corner does. Uh, so make sure to check out his videos if you really wanna see how that works. So anyway, that's a quick idea of how this measures. One thing I wanna add is that you notice that this is not terrible of a curve. So, you know, like I was saying, if you didn't need a ton of SPL, you can actually just lob this part off and flatten this out so you have a smooth response, right? You typically you wanna cross over around here at 80 hertz. So you kinda chop that off with parametric EQ. And then from there, you know, you have this drop off. And so you could kinda, basically what you're kinda doing is you're taking some of this energy, some of this ability to produce these notes, you're cutting them off and then you're kinda shifting it over. So you may be able to extend this out slightly further over here at 23 hertz. It's only at 96 decibels, which is not too bad. But if you add a few of these, like I'm saying, then that might be pretty usable. And if you decide to put them under your couch, meaning that it's really close to you, that also might help with that. So let's see how this inexpensive sub places on the subwoofer leaderboard. All right, here we are at the subwoofer leaderboard and we have the OSD SS8 DSP. Where does it place? It's under 250 bucks. And so we have the Micah MS-12, MS-10, and my DIY Voxel subwoofer that I made a while back. And I would have to say, as far as just output and how low it plays, surprisingly, these Micah ones are significantly larger, and this one can uh, outperform those. So easily takes that top spot. As far as best overall subwoofer, let me just put this here for a second. Um, it's not gonna beat out some of these because some of these are much, much bigger subs much more wattage. And so here's the OSD Travoce 12 from OSD as well. DIY sub, Sono sub. And so here's another OSD one, another OSD. And surprisingly, I would say uh, OSD Travoce 12, this one has more potential for output. The Travoce 10 DSP has DSP as well, but so does this one. And from my measurements, I think I am getting more usable output from this one than the OSD Travoce 10. So they're not gonna like me for doing this because this one is more expensive, but I think that this has actually uh, more, more performance than this, uh, more potential at least. And you can fit this under the couch. So as far as form factor, I like this one even better. So uh, over the Travoce 8, I just feel like you're able to get more out of, um, out of this SS8 DSP. So there it goes. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Take care, bye-bye.